Sup folks, Stooge G here with another episode of Nefarious. Uh, doing a weird intro here just because, uh, like I mentioned at the end of my last episode, I kind of got looped into like a mini game cutscene sort of thing that ended up expanding the episode a lot longer than I wanted it to be. So just kind of recording this intro to, to, you know, cue into it. But basically, you'll see, I'm going to cue it up to where you get out of when your conversation starts. But just give me that little mini game kind of thing, and then next time we'll be back into actual levels and stuff like that. But I hope you enjoy it, and here we go. Anything going to trigger? Yes. Crow Beans, what's up, buddy? I really need a solid, my man. You promise never to call me Crow Beans again, I'll consider your request. So check it out. Before you threw me in Prince Jail, I had a thing set up. A thing? A thing at a place with some people. Five of them to be specific, like a hand. In this metaphor, I'm the all-important thumb. You lost me. Short version, I've got a bookie as a contestant on a hot new game show, and I really cannot miss it. This is a matter of life and death. Is it? Yes. Is it really? I am not wrong. You are too busy. Those things are scams anyway. Oh, come on, please. As ludicrous as it sounds, sir, it's my recommendation that you should participate. What? Why? This particular show, Would You Date a Supervillain, has a viewership of well over 3 million people every week. Your reputation alone would skyrocket, not to mention growing social media engagement, increased merchandise sales, and I'm projecting a 6% rise in fear mongering. Are you sure? 100%, sir. All right, fine, but this better not be a waste of my time. This is absolutely a waste of my time. Okay, I wasn't expecting to have to do this. Would you date a super villain? Known in circles as why would you date a super villain? I'm your host, Manfred Frowny. We have three very lucky bachelors up here with us on, on the stage today. The one's a woman. Is that Lady Bachelor crew? Yes, security. First contestants, come on out, please. Everyone put <laughs> put your hands together for the beautiful Princess Cherry Mayapple. Princess Mayapple is from the fabulous beacon of civilization, Macro City. When she's not making policy decisions, she enjoys organizing go-kart races, playing golf and tennis, and beating the crap out of her friends in kingdom-sanctioned fight matches. Wait, what? Princess Mayapple, ask away. My first question is for everyone. How would you prepare for a date with me? Build a giant robot. <laughs> Earning you the fear and respect of your once docile population. Turn them into fanatical slaves for your new globe spinning empire. Did I forget to say at the beginning? I don't even know. All will know you and learn to shiver at the mere utterance of your name, a fear that runs deeper than anyone else could ever concoct. Wait, what was the question again? Next. Both are both bath heated by the flaming souls of the Forsaken, with some light touches of chili powder on the neck just in case things get heated. Wow, that's surprisingly honest. Only the best for you, my spicy apple blossom. Or apple spicy. Moving on. Malice, I will but start by fueling my fleet of death ships so they can later rain down destruction upon your castle. I then demand your eventual surrender and later corporate merger. The way both of our mutually beneficial industries may thrive in these tough economic times. Uh, that sounds sweet. We should talk after all this. I have some great ideas for expanding your business model. I'm sure thing. Next question. Actually, can I ask my own question? Oh, improv. Sure, let's take this puppy off-road. Do you actually see yourselves as villains? I'm gonna say no. Only I'm smart and ruthless enough to guide this ramshackle world into the future of being of action, a frontline commander, not a politician. I will unite this world under my glorious vision. All I need in return is a mere pittance of acknowledgement. Giant golden statues and holidays named after me. You know, little tokens of appreciation. You may find if you put yourself at the top, you're going to be all alone up there. Me, a villain, perish the thought. Media loves to portray me as a bad boy demon lord. I may sometimes be too hot to handle, but I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I'm loving these insightful questions. Now you spend your entire life unlocking and sharing the ancient secrets of magic, take on thousands of students, and a lifetime of research. No one calls you Mouse the Great Enlightener. We realize just one hell beast, suddenly you're this unhinged summoner. Whatever, next time I summon Lord Fatogorn, I'll totally be able to control it this time. Could you not? Princess Mayapple, you've taken our lucky back to your temperatures. Great wordplay. Now it's your time to answer the question Would you date a supervillain? I think villain is an outdated subjective term where all these people are trying to do what we think is best for, for, for society as a whole. And yes or no, Mayapple. I think in the right circumstances, I'd give it a shot. I'm recently single, after all. Well, let's hear it, folks. Who do you think Princess Mayapple should date? I'm going to say me, of course. Mash buttons. I'm mashing buttons. I'm mashing buttons super hard. Mm. 
Malice and maybe Apple it's kind of a nice ring to it. It goes Malice and Malachite. True, but I'm not sure if I'm up for a long distance relationship. I just think I could help her reform. Help with her reform. I choose Malice. So I think I screwed up. The princess's heart has been kidnapped by me. Is that your new tagline? Well, that is it for Princess Mayapple. Our new couple gets an all-expenses-paid dinner at Dodo Grill, your one-stop shop for simulated extinct meats. But I'm a vegetarian. Moving on, our next contestant is a secretary you don't want to mess with. The major domo that will give you a major migraine. Please welcome the instrument of twisted machinations and bureaucracy, Becky Rockler. This ought to be a barrel of laughs. Well, Bex, can I call you Bex? No. All right then, B, it's time to ask your first question. Very well. If you were my boss, what sort of benefits package would I receive? Dental plan. Oh, uh-oh. There's no wrong with teeth. Uh, no, I mean, sorry, I wasn't reading it. Pass. If you worked for me, you'd be in hot water. I would have an office to kids you set up right in front of the main lobby. Now that's a job with benefits. First, I'd woo you away from your current place of employment. Easy enough for an enchanting enchantress. I'd then take over the world with you as my right-hand henchwoman. I'd give you a kingdom or two as part of your signing bonus. My own corporate kingdom, not a bad idea. I think I'm really screwing this up. Next question. Pretend you're writing a love letter to me. What does it say? You still remember the love letter Captain asked you to deliver to Becky. You take it out and look at it. Uh, crumple it up and improvise. Mwahahaha. You were a fool to trust me, Cap. <laughs> I don't write love letters. I am Crow. You chose to work for me because you know how ruthless I am. Stand by me as I conquer the earth and reshape it in my image. Huh. No far away, a single viewer curses your name. Time to make a choice and answer the question Would you date a supervillain? First, let's see what the audience thinks. So I'm gonna mash the buttons again, and I just got an achievement called Office Romance. So, I believe that we have an HR policy that prohibits employees dating each other. Fortunately, I'm the head of the HR department, so an exception may have to be drafted. I choose Crow. Oh, the minions are going to be so happy. Our lucky new couple wins an all expenses paid trip to Winter Down Ski Resort. Resort. Enjoying hot cocoa in lovely war torn winter down, a mere stone's throw from active conflict. It's like you read my diary. Speaking of winter down, our next guest happens to govern the icy nation. My god, how long is this? That's right, it's one of the world's greatest warriors, Princess Elisa Aglaya Nuska Ariella. And Alina, Alina Angelina Avdota Alexandra. Glad to be here, Manfred. Am I just gonna pick them all? Like, I don't understand what's happening here. Well, it's time to fire away. Already, bachelors, it's time for you to run the gauntlet. Describe your perfect sunny afternoon with me. No. I start by hanging myself after dining on a three-course meal of arsenic, cyanide, and candy corn. Oh, Crowley, I'll never tire of your gallows humor. You like to fight, huh? I suppose I could summon a legion of ancient horrors for you to battle. Beasts which existed before time began that blurred the lines of reality, existing in the third and fourth dimension of space and time. Merely gazing at them has been known to drive people insane, and then afterwards perhaps we would open up a nice bottle of fizz. That doesn't sound half bad. Uh, fire-related pun. And then I, uh, um, spit it out, dandy boy. <laughs> right, I... You're an enemy of my nation, so we would go someplace... Oh, I can't do this anymore. Real, I need you to know something. I feel powerless at home to stop this war between our nations. I'm haunted by my family's bloody legacy and my sister's genocidal, genocidal desire to wipe out the dwarvish people. And I admire your determination to end this battle. I secretly read every shred, read every shred of propaganda you dispense into my country. And I want so desperately to stand up to that tyrant of an ogre princess and shout no more. No more war, no more violence. We bleed fire and ice on fields of blue and red. It has to end. Ogre and dwarf can live in peace. It's too much. I break my loathsome silence. This war must end. Princess Ariel, I love you. Huh. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I can't believe that I just committed high treason on national television. I can't go home. She's going to kill me. My sister will have me executed. Relax. I'm with you, Danny boy. I didn't think you had it in you. But maybe it's a good thing that Purple Nitwit got you out of there. Hey, I'm a purple genius, thank you. Let's take advantage of the situation a little longer. We'll stay on the ship and hash out some plans. 
That sounds nice. You hear that, Tefra? We're coming for you. Buckle up. Well, I think we can call this an episode. Deception surprises high treason. You never know what will happen next on Would You Date a Supervillain? I've been your host, Manfred Frowny. Winners don't do drugs. Good night, everyone. I think we got his own credits in here. Do, do, do. Let it run. Oh man, I'm still shaking. I can't believe that happened. Your people are strong, but they're also smart. As much as I like the battle is a portion who see no value in meaningless conflict, we'll get through to them. Just don't do anything crazy until I take over the world. We'll see what comes first. It's can wait until after your plans come to fruition. Boss, we need to get back on track. Agreed, full speed ahead. I mean it more literally. Princess Tefra was quick to anger over her brother's declaration, utilizing the rattle track rail system to launch an offensive. Our home base is in danger. Let's go, Crow. Me and you are going to take this tyrant down. Oh, my hero, how I swoon for you. Very well. Our goals are aligned. Let's ride out. But get away from the wheel. Only I get to punch it. It's my kind of thing. Actually, everyone out. Go. Back to work or back to lounging for you royal folks. So that actually ended up unlocking the last section. I want to go down real quick just to see if uh, if that actually unlocked new conversation options here. High treason declaring love, bearing my heart and soul for the world to see. Been kind of a stressful week for the Lord of Fire. Super grateful you have an onboard masseuse. Okay, so let's talk to Becky. My online follower account exploded after our appearance on that silly show. I believe our game was paid off and we value, value the online community's attention. We have several thousand reblogs on Crumbler. 2,000 new followers on Squawker. Several trending posts on Reddit. All right, all right, it was a good call. Okay, I was wondering I was, was something weird was gonna happen because we were going on date or whatever. But I don't think we're actually going on date, but I think we were like, we goofed up the whole mail apple thing. Like I didn't realize I was supposed to be mashing buttons. Hey, so I didn't win the date with her and I'm kind of angry about that, but there's nothing I can apparently do about it. Maybe I should give Malice a call. Oh, I'm so nervous, what should I say? It's so nice to date again. Yeah, I feel like that should gone the other way. How delightfully entertaining. I may have become a regular viewer of that show. And dear Malachite, oh, I never knew he felt so strongly about his situation. All four of my eyes have been sobbing. Anything new here? What a fun show. My favorite part was the commercials. Talk to Ariella. I am so awesome. Here I thought you'd be you totally buggered my plan, but I managed to salvage the whole situation. Maybe Alkite isn't as useless as I thought. And he does have a cute butt. This might just work. Is there anything new here? What's the BL stand for? System technology advancement by increasing levels of efficiency. Took us all day to come up with that one, okay. Now we're gonna head up to the map. And we will doot doot, call the episode up there. This obviously got turned into two episodes as I'm recording it, but that's okay. So in the next one, we're likely just going to knock out like some of these smaller things, like Ferris. Whoop. We're gonna knock out Ferris Folly. Uh, I guess I could come over here anyway because I just accidentally did. Then we also have Dr. Keckle's lab, and then our main story thing is going to rattle track rails. But we'll come back to that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave a like, share the video, or subscribe to the channel. This piece probably ended up being a really small and might just be that uh, game show. But if it is, then I'll probably follow it up with another short episode. I don't know how long like this Ferris Folly is going to take. Hopefully it's not super long. But... I really, the, that show was kind of funny. I wish I had realized I was supposed to mash buttons and won the date with Mayapple as well and saw how that would have played out. But eh, it is what it is. Uh, I'll see if there's some way I can go back and do it, but it doesn't look like I can unless I replay the game. But we'll figure it out. Thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, please have a great day.